Good morning, Body Science crew. Uh, welcome to my first live webinar. Thank you to Body Science for getting me online. Uh, my name's Lou Curry, for those who haven't met me. My background's in sports chiro, exercise physiology, S&C, and also I just love education, so I'm really happy to be here joining you this morning, and thank you for joining me on this beautiful morning. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is set the scene for what we're going to look at over the next few weeks. Now, with a lot changing, and you've heard it over and over, there's so many changes that are happening. What can we do in order to resolve any types of discomfort we might come across at home? We're getting so many questions right now. Is it my posture that's causing my pain? Why am I feeling so stiff? Why is my shoulder sore again? It hasn't been sore in years. There are so many things that are happening in our lifestyles right now that sometimes we're looking in the wrong place in order to resolve some issues. So to start with, I just want to start with a little story about how we came to be as adults. And it's beautiful to watch kids play right now. Uh, for the parents at home with kids, watching kids play and watching the enjoyment uh, as they play, very rarely do they ever complain about pain, stiffness, tension, etc. So we can take a lesson out of that as adults. And this is what I want to talk about and start with today. So if you think about the human being, we're the only animal, and we are animals, we're the only animals to stand on two feet without a tail. But when we were born, we are actually born into a curled up ball, into this flexion type of state, which means all of our muscles towards our, the front of our body become nice and tight. And then as we start to learn how to stand up, we start building this extension pattern, which means that all those strong muscles we love to train through squats and deadlifts and rows, etc., start to make us a little bit taller. Now, if we think about when we're in this stressful state at home, is posture coming from the muscle itself or is it truly being driven by the neurology of our system? And what we're finding more and more is because people are, tend to be more of this stressful state at home. It's the emotional drivers which end up changing our posture. And then potentially, it might be posture that's also driving stiffness. Okay, so when we start talking about these uh, things like neck stiffness, lower back stiffness, shoulder discomfort, if you've had a blunt force injury, what I mean by that is, if you've gone for a run, you slipped off the gutter and you've rolled your ankle, then I'm not too concerned about your emotional state leading into that. That's purely just going to be a rehab of the ankle and we can go through that and you can always send me messages and I can help you through that. But when we start looking at tension, that slowly resolves, uh, uh, that comes up over time. Think about you've been at home now for the past couple of weeks, your neck starts getting stiff. What's the method we always go to to try and resolve this? Generally, it's one of, well, let's stretch it. Let's work on our mobility. But before we can add an intervention, we must understand what's causing it in the first place. Now, the fascinating thing with stiffness and muscle soreness, myalgias, whatever you, you might call it, is there generally is this underlying driver. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the neuroscience, the neurology, it's stuff I am fascinated by. But if we start looking at things like neck stiffness, Think about where most people hold their tension. Whenever we talk to our clients, they'll say, I hold my tension in my traps. Well, you, me, everybody does. Because our brain is geared to protect us. We are geared for survival, which means anything that is threatening, we respond by putting our foot on the gas and we drive our sympathetic nervous system. This is our flight or fight response. Now think about when you're stressed, when you're angry, when you want to fight. Our body is preparing you for activity, which means all of our muscles now start to become tight. But if you're sitting there going, but Luke, I'm not doing anything at home that's increasing my sympathetic nervous system. I haven't got my foot on, on the gas. I'm not training really hard at the moment. My activity is dropped. I'm just sitting at home. Well, physical activity is only but one point of this. And my suggestion right now, you've got great people on these live feeds explaining to you how to train, all different methods of training different ways of eating, nutritional advice, ingredients, all perfect things. But what we really have to start looking at as well, in conjunction with that is, even without all the physical stress on you right now, what emotional stress is affecting you? Luke from uh, Stress Teflon's talking about this as well. So also jump on his live feeds and have a look at those podcasts as well. To explain it really simply, when we have our foot on the gas all the time, when the muscles start to tighten up and they start to grip hard together. If we now try and add an intervention like stretching for what we call a neurological lock or a stress response lock, imagine you've got a power band and you want to increase the length of that. That might be my neck, for example, as I stretch. 
And now you say, but Luke, I've got a really tight knot right through the middle of it. How do I get rid of it? I've been trying to stretch it. Have you ever noticed that with the more stretching you do sometimes, the muscle becomes tighter and tighter? The quickest analogy I can explain there is, with a power band, if I was to put a knot in this power band, and now the intervention here is, well, let's stretch and get rid of that knot. The harder I stretch that knot, the tighter the knot becomes. Why that occurs, again, is because we're geared for survival. Whenever we put stress back through these muscles, we've got these beautiful little receptors in that muscle that says, the more stress you give me, I'm going to contract harder so you don't hurt yourself. So what I'm explaining to a lot of our clients right now is, before we start creating an intervention from what we call a musculoskeletal standpoint, let's control the emotional standpoint. How do we do that? There's so many simple strategies out there to start with. Now, they'll all chop and change depending on um, what's happening in your life right now. But one of the simplest things, and you would have heard this a lot, is breathing techniques. Now, there's so many different breathing techniques, and there's also been live feeds on these, so go back and have a look at them, from box breathing, for example. You can meditate. Go through a nasal breathing as you do a recovery walk one day. Why is this important? Particularly with nasal breathing, we know that the diaphragm, your main breathing muscle here, becomes activated. The air is warmed as well. There's greater pressure, which means now you can really start using that diaphragm. We know that when you activate the diaphragm, this beautiful big breathing muscle, that you start to calm down your nervous system. And when you calm down your nervous system, you start taking your foot off that accelerator, that sympathetic accelerator, or that fight stress response accelerator, and you start gently touching the brake. This is the parasympathetic. This is your rest and digest. Now, if we can gently, every day, just add a little bit more to that brake, in conjunction with adding a little bit of accelerator, in things like your training every day, you'll, you'll be on the accelerator and that's fine. But we just really have to think about those recovery strategies to come back to touching the brake as well. So again, I just want to say over the next few weeks, um, a couple of things that we will start looking at more is what can you do whilst you're at home? Uh, one of the questions we're getting a lot is, but Luke, I don't have act, um, any exercise equipment at home. Or I've got very limited exercise equipment. There's a couple of uh, bits of advice I'd like to give you straight off the bat. Just because now you can train a lot more doesn't mean you can jump straight in the deep end. Um, we, we are fine. There's a lot of uh, overuse injuries at the moment. So because you don't have the exercise equipment like your bikes, your ski ergs, your rowers, a lot more people pounding the pavement now. And we have to be very careful that we don't give people free rein or you just don't give yourself free rein to go and gas yourself as well, okay? Um, in saying that too, when you are at home and you're doing body weight activity over the next few weeks, we'll talk about how we can change up um, your positions, whether you're low on the ground, push-up positions, changing the amount of contact points with the ground as well. And then we can add household things as well. We've been using water bottles. The kids, for example, I actually accidentally dropped one of mine yesterday, but that's another story for another day. But there's a lot we can do around the house. Uh, for people living in apartment blocks, if there's a, a stairwell in your, compartment, uh, in your apartment block, you can use that for a lot of lower extremity work as well, okay? And we'll talk about this as we go. The last thing I want to say uh, before I close and then we get excited for the gym coming up at nine o'clock is right now, even though I'm a practitioner who deals with a lot of musculoskeletal issues, the most important thing to focus on right now is the emotional health. Reach out for support networks. Reach out and talk to people. There's a lot of hotlines out there. There's a lot of counsel. There's a lot of support out there if you need it. If you need help in making contact with these people, always uh, send me a message. You can access me through our Instagram page, uh, page uh, which is just at KC Sports Cairo. Just send me a message and I'll help you out. Um, keep it in mind that anytime we have an emotional response to a trigger, it always accesses a feeling. Those feelings are the symptoms that you're feeling. When you feel tightness in your neck, that's a feeling triggered by an emotion. When you get an increase in cortisone, that's a physiological response that occurs from an emotion as well, okay? This manifestation that we get through the body, now we have to bring it back into what's the driver for it. At the end of the day, don't be scared by it all because our nervous system is an absolutely beautiful thing that we can control. In saying that too, our nutrition needs to be on point. When we talk about this autonomic nervous system, we've got the gas on the sympathetic accelerator and we have the brake on the parasympathetic uh, side. There's also another component called the enteric nervous system 
Now, this is where your nutritionists, uh, dietitians, chefs, etc., will talk about why gut health is so important because our gut health will also drive this part of the brainstem which drives all of our automated function. So in saying that, guys, please share any questions you'd like. Uh, you can send me messages. As of next week, what we'll start doing is we'll get outside in the garden, around the house. We'll start doing some practical applications of how to train at home, how to do some rehab, how to handle your lower back pain and your neck pain, for example. And if you want to talk about anything uh, specifically, again, shoot me a message. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, hop on the Body Science website. They've got tremendous products, particularly around calming down the nervous system, helping you sleep as well. And uh, enjoy your training. And coming up next at nine o'clock, Andy Jim with the whiteboard. Take care, guys. Thank you very much.